Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel where we delve into the world of civil engineering problem solving. In today's video, we are going to dive deep into the calculations of natural frequencies, mode shapes and critical check for orthogonality condition in a multi-story building, just like the one illustrated in the figure. So let's get right into it. We have got a multi-story structure with specified masses for each slab and column stiffness values. The mass at the top story is M. The first floor has a mass of 2M and the ground floor matches with 2M as well. Likewise, the stiffness of each column is K for every story. Now let's break down these complex calculations step by step to make them more manageable. Stick around and by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to tackle these intricate problems in structural engineering. Let's jump right in. Now let's break down the process of calculating mode shape vectors. This is a crucial step in understanding the dynamic behavior of our multi-story building. Follow along with these steps. Step 1. Begin by formulating the mass and stiffness matrices using the provided data. This step sets the foundation for our subsequent calculations. Apply the characteristic, characteristic equation which is represented as k minus omega square m is equal to zero. This equation plays a pivotal role in determining the natural frequencies and corresponding mode shapes. Crunch the numbers to calculate the natural frequency omega and discretize the matrix, yielding a new matrix equation. This step is essential for further analysis and computations. Step four, with the groundwork laid in the previous steps, we can now proceed to calculate the mode shapes. These shapes provide insights into how the structure vibrates at different frequencies. Stay tuned as we navigate through each step, demystifying the process and empowering you to confidently calculate mode shape vectors for multi-story buildings. Let's dive into the details. Before we dive in, into the nitty gritty of mode shape vector calculations, take a moment to support our channel if you find value in our content, please consider liking this video, sharing it with your peers and subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to stay updated on all our upcoming videos. Your engagement is crucial in motivating me to create more insightful content specifically tailored to your needs in the realm of civil engineering. Your support fuels the journey of sharing knowledge and together we can make this channel a go-to resource for all the things in civil engineering. Now let's get back to our mode shape vector calculation and unravel the intricacies of multi-story building dynamics. Our initial step in this mode shape vector calculation journey is to construct the mass and stiffness matrices. Let's break it down for a clear understanding. For the mass matrix, it is a straightforward process. Simply input the values of the masses from the top stored into the diagonal elements. All other diagonal elements in the mass matrix apart from the diagonal swarm will be set to zero. Now on moving to the stiffness matrix, start by inputting the stiffness value for the first diagonal element. The first off diagonal element or say the chord of the matrix will be the negative will be the negative of the stiffness value of the top story. The second diagonal element is the sum of stiffness of the top and first story, while the corresponding off diagonal element is the negative of the stiffness of the first story. This pattern continues with each subsequent diagonal element being the sum of the stiffness values of the current story and the one above and of the off diagonal element or let's say the chord of the matrix being the negative of the stiffness of the current story. As I have shown you guys earlier, this is the value we have obtained from this. These two are the values we have obtained from this. It is the negative of this value. This is the value we have obtained from the sum of these two values. And this is the value we have obtained from negative of this value. and this is the value sum of these two values. Here's an interesting thing. You can also formulate these two matrices starting from the ground floor. Both approaches yield the same mode set. But if we begin from the top story, 
we eliminate the need for an extra step of normalizing the top story later on. So with these matrices in place, we are ready to delve deeper into the intricacies of our mode set vector calculations. Now that we have our mass and stiffness matrices, let's move on to apply the characteristic equation to calculate the natural frequencies. Here's how we can do it. Plug in the mass and stiffness matrices into the characteristic equation. Simplify the equation as much as possible by factoring out the common terms. This step streamlines the equation and prepares it for the next operation. In our problem, we take K common from the stiffness matrix and M from the mass matrix. Dividing the equation by the product factor of the stiffness matrix and simplify the mass matrix by denoting the product factor of the mass matrix by P. Perform straightforward matrix operations and open the matrix to form an equation by calculating its determinant. Then calculate the value of P directly using your calculator. Please, I would like to request you guys to note this matrix because we will use the same for discretization process later on. In this way, we can calculate the value of P and the values of P calculated are 0 0.1341 1 and 1.866. Please write this in downward ascending order, which will make your understanding and your computation more easier. The number of story in our building is equal to the number of distinct value of P obtained from the calculations. Now by solving for different value of P, we unlock different values for the natural frequency omega as shown in the calculations here. We input different values of P in this equation we just created now. Here we get the values of omega as 0 0.366 under root k over m, 1 under root k over m and 1.366 under root k over m. Here we, put, we have put the different values of p obtained previously into this equation and we have got the different values of omega here. Now you guys might be wondering that we can calculate three unknown phi or mode shape vectors that we have by because we have the three unknown equation, three known equations from the matrix. However, due to the dynamic state of the system, a direct solution is not possible. This is where discretization of the matrix comes into play. For simplicity and clarity in our calculations and graphs, let's, let's consider the mode shape at the top story is equal to 1. By setting this reference point, we establish a basis for the mode shape at the stories below, expressing them in ratios relative to the top story. To make the problem more manageable, let's divide the matrix into four parts as shown in the figure, as shown in the slide. E11, E10, E01 and E00. Here, 0 refers to many and 1 refers to 1. Or let's say 0 refers to more than 1. As you can see, here E11 refers to 1 refers 1 and 1 refers 1. That is, in this matrix, this is the corresponding matrix of this matrix, here it has one row and one column since this is the one element, single element. In this matrix, here is one and zero. As I have early said you earlier, one refers to one and zero refers to many. Here is one row and two column or more than one column. So the element is denoted as E10. Similarly, here E01 refers to E has many rows and only one column. Similarly, let's see here, there are many rows or more than one rows and one column. Similarly, here E00 refers to many row and many column. Here we have many row or more than one row and many column or let's say more than one column. This division allows us to denote and work with specific segments of the matrix simplifying our calculations and providing a clearer path forward. 
after discretization we obtained this equation and now we will perform matrix multiplication and get these equations then we will get these equations to calculate the mode shape we can choose any equation from these two we we will here choose the equation 2 because the calculation will be easier with the matrix with many row many row and uh, many column which is e00 so we will choose equation 2 and perform simplification to calculate the omega which will result to the matrix shown here here phi 0 n refers to many rows that is why here is we have obtained phi 2 n and phi 3 n and upon multiplication of these two matrix we will get this equation since uh, in the previous slide e00 is this matrix and e01 is this matrix it is in the inverse state and negative state so the equation becomes like this for three different values of p we get three different values of phi or, or we can say two different values of phi because phi 1 n is 1 we have considered that unity in the top story deflection in the, at the top story is equal to 1 we will get three different value of phi 1 phi 2 and phi 3 which are the mode shape vectors here first mode shape vector is this for the value of p 0 0.134 the second mode shape vector for p is equal p equals to 1 is equal is this and the third mode shape vector for p is equal to 1.866 is this similarly we can input uh, the similarly we can input the value of p and get the required mode shape now we will plot the calculated mode shape value since we have considered unit deflection at the top story the phi 1 is equal to 1 at every mode shapes similarly we will input other values of p we will plot the positive value in the right side and negative value in the left side this is the standard practice to draw the mode shape now we have calculated the mode shape values it's time to visualize and understand the dynamic behavior of our multi-story building as a reference point we have considered unit deflection at the top story phi 1 is equals to 1 with this in mind let's input the calculated values for phi 2 and phi 3 this is phi 2 and this is phi 3 follow the standard practice in drawing mode shape positive uh, values are plotted on the right side and the negative values on the left side this convention aids in clearly depicting the structural deformations and vibration at each story. The plotted mode shape graph provides a visual representation of how the building responds to dynamic force at different frequencies. Each curve and deflection indicate a unique mode shape associated with the specific natural frequency. Now we will move on to check the orthogonality condition of the mode shape vector. For mass orthogonality condition, we have the formula transpose of phi into mass matrix into phi matrix. And for the stiffness uh, orthogonality, we have the formula phi matrix it's transpose and into stiffness matrix into the phi matrix. Now we have the phi matrix. Let's take the next step by calculating the transpose of the phi matrix. This involves simply interchanging the rows and columns. With the transpose phi matrix in hand, we can now input it into the stiffness and orthogonality condition. This step is essential in ensuring that our mode shapes are accurate and orthogonal, contributing to the overall stability and reliability of our structural analysis. Once we have input the matrices into the orthogonality condition where phi tm is equal to this, mass matrix is equal to this and phi matrix is equal to this. The next step involves matrix multiplication which is this three matrix. The process is, the process is straightforward and can be easily accomplished with a calculator. 
engineering calculator performing the multiplication pay attention to the results if all the elements of the matrix except for the diagonal elements are nearly equal to zero i'll repeat again are nearly equal to zero then we have successfully satisfied the mass orthogonality condition while it's not always possible to obtain exact zeros due to numerical precision achieving the values close to zero indicates the fulfillment of the condition here in our problem we have satisfied the mass orthogonality since all the elements except the diagonal elements are equal to zero the mass orthogonality condition is checked and satisfied similarly we can check the stiffness orthogonality of the given structure here we have already obtained the uh, phi t matrix transpose matrix and we also have phi matrix similarly we have uh, we have already known the stiffness matrix and upon multiplication of these three matrix from the calculator we will get this result into k here we have taken k common to make the calculation easier in mass matrix also we have taken m common to make the calculation easier here except the diagonal elements all values are close to zero other di elements with except diagonal elements are equal to zero which indicates that the orthogonality condition for stiffness is also satisfied thank you so much please like share and subscribe to our channel thank you very much